Mailbag time here at Falcons today. I'm answering questions that came in during our live show, which airs every single Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. So come hang out with us if you have a question you want to ask to get on next week's mailbag. But our first question comes in from Nick. Do you think we could get Harold Landry? The Titans are likely going to be in a fire sale mode. They've already made two trades, DeAndre Hopkins and Ernest Jones. I could see Harold Landry being a piece that they hold on to. Him and Justin Simmons are core members of that defense. So I think in order to pry Landry away, you'd have to make an offer the Titans can't refuse. And with the Falcons having just four picks in the upcoming draft, I don't think they could probably make a sweet enough offer for Tennessee to say yes. So, Nick, I would say don't get your hopes up on this one. Phantom, big boss, trade for Zayvon Collins if Troy misses more games. Why not just sign the uh, former first-round pick the Commanders released, Jamin Davis? Um, No. I would say that you're not going to see many middle linebacker trades go down. I know Ernest Jones and Jerome Baker just got swapped in a little bit of a pick pick change as well, but it's not common you see off-ball linebackers go for draft picks because you got to think about it a little bit through the eyes of a GM. That fifth-round pick, let's say they gave up for Collins, well, they could use that fifth-round pick on a linebacker who is going to have four years of a cheap rookie contract, whereas Collins only has a year and a half left on that first-round contract of his. So if a starter goes down for the rest of the season, that'll change things. But if it's just, hey, we need some help to get through the next couple of weeks, with Atlanta having four picks as it is, they don't have that luxury. So I would say that's probably unlikely. Jason Greenway. How do you feel Justin Simmons has been playing? Not super impressed at this time. Use code CLNS. More Richie Grant. Richie Grant has only played 19 defensive snaps so far this year. I think majority of that came in the Eagles game back in week two. How has Justin Simmons been? Not that great. We're only at halfway through the season, so there's a lot of time left for Simmons to kind of look like the Pro Bowl, All-Pro player that I think he is and what he can play at. But yeah, Unfortunately, he has not been a takeaway machine. I also think that's somewhat a product of quarterbacks just avoiding the middle of the field when they go up against Atlanta's secondary. And they can kind of get by with that because the corners haven't been elite. They haven't been bad by any stretch. They haven't been elite. But also, they've also the quarterbacks have had plenty of time with a very bad pass rush to somewhat dice up this Atlanta secondary. So Justin Simmons for sure has been at a C level. Hopefully we can get him up to like a B to B plus level if we're being realistic for the next second half of the year. Kirko Chains, any chance the Falcons trade for Cooper Cup? We're filming this on Thursday, so Cup's about to play on Thursday night. My prediction right now is that the Rams are going to win this game. We'll see how the airs when ages win this airs. I would say no. Only way I see the Falcons trading for Cooper Cup is if they just decide. We're not going to find a good pass rusher. So instead of just trading a pick for a pass rusher, just for the sake of that, because we feel obligated, let's just load up on offense. I'm not saying that's a good idea, and I don't think the Falcons should do that, but that is the only small chance I could ever create in my head for how Atlanta would trade for Cooper Cup. I'll also add... I don't think that's a very wise trade for the Falcons to make, even if they did need a wide receiver. Cup is not cheap. He's got a pretty big contract still underway. Another expensive year on the books for next year. And that Triple Crown winner, that was a long time ago. The guy has been unavailable for three straight seasons. He's played about half of the games. So the Rams won a second. I would not give that if I were Atlanta. Now, if you have a question you want to ask, Tune in to a future live show. We go live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern, so you can ask your question at that point. Really appreciate everyone who's already subscribed to the channel and hangs out with us during our live shows as well. It's a blast. It's kind of a new way to take in some Falcons Today content. Andrew Beto, would you guys trade for Ojolari and extend him since he's a little bit younger compared to the other edge rushers available? Uh, we can look at five 
realistic trade targets because I don't think the Falcons are going to make some big home run trade for Miles Garrett or Max Crosby. And even someone like Darius Smith might be a little bit too expensive for them. So Aziz Ojolari of the more realistic and affordable trade targets is definitely my favorite of the bunch. I still think he has good football on him. He has four sacks this year. I think he's unfortunately just been in a tough situation of Brian Burns and Kayvon Thibodeau are above, above him on the depth chart. You're not going to take those guys off the field just to get Ojolari an extra snap or two. So would I trade Ojolari? Trade for it? Yes, I would. I would trade for Aziz Ojolari. Would I extend him? Let's see how the rest of the season rolls out. Ojolari is not in a spot where he has any leverage to hold out if he doesn't get a new deal. So play out the rest of this year. It would be the second time we've seen the Falcons bring in a former New York Giant who was a Georgia Bulldog, Lorenzo Carter and Ojolari. So the two of them can be bunkmates. We can have a whole Step Brothers movie come out after these two. But I would say Ojolari is my number one target, and you don't need to extend him until after the season if he plays well. NC Show, if, and it's a big if, the Falcons go on to win. Oh, I love this is going. Go on to win the Super Bowl. What do you think their offseason plans would be and what would you what would you do? Okay. Um, if the Falcons win the Super Bowl, I'm looking at this the lens of who is the free agent upcoming that they would want to bring back. Uh, I mean, they don't have to worry about Kirk Cousins. Uh, I'm trying to think of like expiring deals coming up for the Falcons. I would say it would probably be something like just run it back. I don't think they'd have to make any big moves or I wish I had a better answer for you, but I, I don't think there's a big sexy move I'm trying to think of. I mean, it's really tough to think this far down the line, but I mean, your offensive line, they're all under contract for next year. Are they not? I think Jake Matthews and Lindstrom still have another. Yeah, they definitely do. They're not a contract year. Bijan's here. Pitts is here. London's here. On defense, um, he's a pass rusher. Terrell's locked up. Bates is locked up. If the Falcons won the Super Bowl, I would say they should devote that 32nd overall pick to the best edge rusher at the draft. That is the simplest answer I can give you. I do appreciate the question, though, and I love the optimism. Sorry I don't have a little bit more of a sexy response, though. All right, today's show is made possible thanks to our friends over at Prize Picks. That's America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 10 million active members. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player staff projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn $10 into $1,000. Download the prize picks app today and use code CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play $5, that's code CLNS on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Prize picks, run your game. Cy Anderson, how realistically do you see us winning the division if we somehow don't get another pass rusher before the trade deadline? So what I have here for Cy is the AFC and NFC championship finalists over the last five years and where they rank in sacks. Now, I know this isn't quite just winning the division, but it does go to show that you need to be able to get after the quarterback if you want to get all the way to the end of the playoffs. I mean, there are a couple of outliers. The 2019 Packers were, you know, barely top half, but all the winners on the left were top five in the NFC. As for the AFC, you definitely have some major outliers. Look at the 2021 Chiefs and the 2022 Bengals. Both were bottom five in the NFL. It also helps when Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow are your quarterback, but Kirk Cousins is playing at a really high level right now, I think. So, uh, Cy, to answer your question with a real number, how realistic is it? I'd say 90%. Like, I, I'm very confident that even with a bad pass rush, the Falcons can win the NFC South. But I'm sure we all have the same goals here of, it's not about just winning the NFC South. This is a team that is so talented, they should be able to go further than a 10-7 and NFC South win and lose at home in the playoffs in round one. I would like them to join that graphic of NFC Championship finalists. And I think, like we saw in the NFC, you got to have a good pass rush. David Hamilton, 
if we are giving up everything, why not trade Garrett? I love Crosby, but Garrett is built different. Yeah, Garrett is called Superman for a reason. He is an absolute made-in-a-lab physical specimen. Again, though, I, I feel like far too often people forget it takes two to trade. You're the Browns. and I think any blockbuster trade like this should start by convincing the Browns to do it rather than convincing the Falcons to do it. You're the Browns. You want to trade your number one player in franchise history for probably two first-round picks, maybe a second, maybe a second and a third. I mean, that's about what it goes for. And that first-round pick this year with the way the Falcons are playing, it's probably going to be like in the late 20s. Like if we're just kind of picking an average spot, 27, 28. I really doubt the Browns are going to be on board with, yeah, let's trade the guy we used the first overall pick on to get the 28th pick in the draft. I understand that they are not in a good spot, but you got to give them a better offer than that. And I don't think you can give them a better offer. Rusty Moore. Don't you just love that Matthew Judon came to Atlanta and all of a sudden forgot how to rush a pa rush the passer? Typical Falcons luck. Don't like our defensive scheme either soft. Yeah, I don't understand it, but as soon as pass rushers put on a Falcons uniform, they all of a sudden develop an extreme allergic reaction to opposing quarterbacks. I mean, the Bears are cursed without having a good franchise quarterback, the only team without a 4,000-yard passer, and the Falcons can't get a pass rusher. The Ravens can't get a wide receiver. Every single franchise is always missing one thing. Fortunate for the Falcons, this one thing is probably the second most important position in all of sports. Why couldn't they just never get like a good safety? I'd much rather swap that. A bad punter. That'd be a good, that'd be a good bad problem to have. Got a great offense, great, but that damn punter... Just cannot pin them inside the 20. All right, we have a couple of Super Chats here. Bentley Lancaster, what's up? Rise up. We need pass rush. Terry, do it for Bentley. Don't let Bentley down. Let's get a pass rusher. Just do something. You're dead last in sacks. Reginald Banks, uh, Reginald Banks, what would it take to get Harold Landry? I'm just going to peek at Harold Landry's stats right now in live time. But I would say off the dome right now, it would take, for a guy who has back-to-back -back seasons of 10-plus sacks going into this year and four sacks in six games already, it would probably take at least a second-round pick. So you look at the Falcons' four draft picks. Are you willing to part ways with a second-rounder? Maybe. Maybe. It's a big swing, though. Not going to lie. And I've been advocating for a trade, but moving on from – one of your four picks that happens to be your second best pick. If anyone's ever played Stratego, that's like losing your Marshall. Is he the good one? I can't remember. But this is a very hefty price to pay. I would say Reginald, a second round draft pick. All right, who you got, by the way, for Sunday? Falcons or Buccaneers? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm taking the Dirty Birds. I want to hear from you, though.